Welcome into DRF Daily, DRF Sports' betting live stream coming at you live every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Today, we have a fantastic guest on, Matt Wyrick, a Nationals reporter for NBC Sports. Washington is jumping on, talking all things Nats with us, uh, all things MLB. It's going to be fantastic. And uh, later on, we're going to try and replicate a three-in-one day in our best bets, a uh, fantastic bounce back. But first welcoming in Matt Wyrick. Matt, how are you doing today? Doing well, Jack. It's good to see you, man. Thanks for having me on. Great to see you as well. Matt and I, um, college classmates, um, and then he went off to cover a big league team. How's uh, how's covering the Nats treating you? Yeah, you know, the, the season might not be super pretty in terms of wins and losses, but uh, I grew up covering this team, watching this team uh, you know, the Nationals have been a big part of my life for a long time. So it's really just it's a dream come true to be able to be there you know, on a consistent basis, talk to the players, talk to the coaches and, and just watch this team every day and, and get paid. for it. So can't complain. Yeah, fantastic answer. The Nationals, I think we'll just kind of jump right into um, everything going on with the Nats this season. They're 25 and 46. Uh, they're 29 and 42 against the spread. Not great stuff going down for them. Uh, they've lost 11 of their last 15, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so a little bit of a, a losing streak. What's happening with the Nationals? 2019, they win the World Series and COVID hits. Uh, 2021 wasn't kind to them. And it looks like this season won't be kind to them either. No, yeah, they they entered play yesterday with the worst record in the National mm -hmm. League. Certainly, they didn't have high expectations coming into this season, especially after the trade deadline last year when they traded eight veterans away, including Max Scherzer and Trey Turner, uh, in a big fire sale of epic proportions, really, for the <laughs> Nationals, a team that had been competing for championships pretty much every year since 2012. Uh, now they're kind of got to focus on youth development. Uh, you know, the Nationals won't go as far to call it a rebuild. They don't want it to be a lengthy, you know, restructuring process, but their farm system was really depleted. Uh, they really hadn't been, you know, they had been hit hard by injuries in 2021 and didn't have the depth. Uh, to make up for it. So now their their plan is to, you know, theoretically get back to contention before Juan Soto uh, hits free agency. Once again, he's got two and a half years left of team control. So it's all about Soto. They want to extend him to a long-term deal. Whether or not he's willing to do that with agent Scott Forrest remains to be seen, but certainly that is their number one priority. So you mentioned Juan Soto, two and a half years under team control. That was actually one of my questions because I want to jump into Juan Soto before we really dive into more of the Nats. And this is just for my own personal, my personal knowledge. I don't know how much this has to do with betting the nationals and, you know, sports betting as a whole, but it was, they offered him what seemed like a massive contract over this off season. He turned it down. They still control him for two and a half years. What are the odds he is suiting up with the Nats in three years from now? You know, I, I do think that the nationals are going to make the sizable offer. Now there's a big wild card here in that the team is currently being considered to be sold. Yeah. Uh, so we may be seeing new ownership coming in in the next 12 months here. And I don't really expect the team to sign to an extension before that. You know, if, if you're Soto, do you really want to attach yourself to an organization where you don't know who's going to be cutting your paychecks for the next 10 plus years? Probably not. You <laughs> want to wait and see who, who that guy who comes in, what that group looks like. Uh, and what their commitment to winning is, because that's the most important goal, at least from what Soto has stated uh, in terms of his next team is winning. So, you know, once that new ownership group comes in, I think they're going to be motivated to sign Soto to an extension. I mean, you don't want to, you know, come in as a new ownership group and disenfranchise yourself from the fan base by immediately letting your star player, future Hall of Famer walk. You know, this is this is going to be a huge goal for that no, new ownership group and something that they can kind of immediately attach their legacy is signing Soto to a long-term deal. So it's going to be pricey. You know, they, they offered reportedly a $350 million contract to him last off season that was declined. And it kind of made sense. You know, he's still due to make about 60, 70 million over these next three seasons. So, you know, you take that 70 million out of it, uh, you know, a $280 million contract to over 12 years. That's really not market price for Juan Soto. I think we need to be looking more to the 400, 450, maybe even 500 million. Uh, dollar range uh, for a player of this caliber. I know it's crazy to That's say, so but Soto, money. he's so good. And he's really has the perfect storm of just being so young. He's going to be just like Bryce Harper hitting free agency at 26, which is pretty much the youngest you can do it. So he's going to be able to maximize his value uh, in the highest degree. And if the nationals want to keep him, they're not going to get a hometown discount. That's so much 
money. Yeah. Um, isn't Monumental Sports Group being rumored to be one of the the lead bidders in it? And they're the ones that own the. Correct me Wizards if I'm wrong. And the Caps. Okay, yeah, and the Mystics. Don't forget about and the, the Mystics. Mystics. Of course. Come on, course. man. Twenty nineteen um, champs, baby. <laughs> yeah, they also <laughs> have gone downhill, just like the Nationals since uh, since winning that championship. Um, so back to the field, off off the field stuff. That was just for my own personal thing with with Juan Soto because I'm always interested if. After after Bryce Harper spurned the Nats, um, as a fair weather Nats fan, that 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 hurt me. Um, betting the Nationals this season has been rough. They haven't covered, they haven't won a lot. Tonight they play the Orioles as I think plus one thirty dogs. Uh, is there any value to betting the Nationals? Is there a pitcher to watch out for? If he starts, you should bet them. Um, you should fade them at all other times. What's kind of bit? What's the strategy with the Nationals? Um, from a betting perspective or even just from a watching perspective, maybe there's a time when, you know, they're worth watching compared to a time when they're worth uh, maybe watching whatever the nationally televised game is. That's, that's in your market. Yeah. You know, I think that, you know, the nationals don't have a lot of come from behind wins this year. So if they are trailing going into the sixth inning and you see a juicy money line on a live bet, I really wouldn't recommend jumping on top of that just because they haven't been a team that's really been rallying. Uh, from behind very much. Uh, so when they're they're behind in the later innings, they tend to lose those games. Uh, one player to keep an eye on, Josiah Gray, uh, has been on a really nice run for them. His last four starts, uh, sub two ERA, has been you know racking up some strikeouts. And he's a big part of their future. They, they acquired him in that Trey Turner, Max Scherzer deal with the Dodgers last year. Uh, and, you know, like I said, he's been on a nice little run here. So, you know, the Nationals, I believe he has the highest winning percentage uh, of any pitcher in terms of just the team's overall record during his starts. Uh, you know, he, he went through a couple of rough patches there in the middle of the season, and that's why his ERA is a bit uh, bloated at the moment, uh, but it is on the way down right now. I believe it's at 4.00 or around there right now. So uh, the Nationals are very excited about what he brings to the table, and certainly they've been winning a lot of games uh, in which he's been starting. So uh, I would definitely keep an eye out for him. And then, you know, player props, you know, guys to, to keep an eye on right now, two young players, KB Ruiz, uh, and Luis Garcia, two young players, a catcher and a shortstop who the Nationals have high hopes for, as also being part of their futures. They have both have been hitting very well, uh, you know, collecting uh, hits and, and bunches, really. They've both been good about getting multi-hit games. So, you know, a two-plus total base prop. Uh, I like that a lot because they kind of both have doubles power. So when they are getting hits, they tend to be more doubles than necessarily singles. So uh, I like both of those guys uh, as far as future pieces, but also just guys who are contributing right now. Love it. I'm um, keeping with the props market going to, we mentioned off air futures market. Give me some, some play, some, some plays for MLB futures. And, and what are they? Some plays for MLB futures. Yeah. I got your, I got your <laughs> website up right now. Um, you know, I, I think that right now the, uh, the Dodgers are pretty much in my mind locks to win the NL West. Uh, they're at minus two fifty, So it's not great value there. I, I do kind of like, the Padres at plus 275 because they are right there. Uh, but the Giants at plus 700 is enticing to me because they're really not that far back in the division. Three and a half games, certainly a, a distance that they can make up. And people forget they are the team that won the NL West yeah. last year. Uh, so that kind of value right there, if you're looking for really good value, I think that really stands out to me. Uh, and then over on the NL East, of course, which I watch all the time, uh, the Braves are plus 200 behind the Mets. And I know that the Mets have just kind of been the best team in the National League to this point, but they are the Mets and they tend to do this thing <laughs> where they get off to nice starts and then they collapse down the stretch. And, you know, last year we were looking at a very similar situation and I was, you know, going on some, on some betting shows and saying, look, look at the Braves, you know, they might be able to do this. Uh, and, and ultimately they did, uh, and they've been doing it for a long time. They're obviously the defending world series champs, you know, Ronald Cunha jr. Is back. They're really starting to hit their stride. They had a 14 game winning streak not too long ago, which is also part of the reason why the Nats have lost so many games, uh, in recent play because they were playing the Braves, unfortunately for them. Uh, and, and the Braves were just collecting wins left and right. So I, I think that the Braves, they were my preseason pick to win the division. And I still think that they're going to eventually pass the Mets and win that title. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the Giants, too, because, like you said, a lot of value on them. And they're playing a little bit below of what their their potential is compared to last season. And if they just kind of figure just a few things out, a little bit better situational hitting, I think they can make a huge jump up over there. And at plus 700, love, love those odds. 
Is there a team that has just terrible value to win the World Series or to win their division? I feel like the Yankees might be it, but maybe I'm just a little biased in that. Yeah, I mean, the Yankees at minus 1,000, you know, <laughs> I don't even know if it's really <laughs> worth taking. I think that they are just – they've been clearly the best team in baseball to this point. Uh, they've really jumped out to a big lead there uh, in that AL East, which we were really expecting to be a really tight division. And I think that, you know, these these other teams in division, I mean, it's a really talented division for sure. Even the Red Sox, who are in fourth place right now, have been on a nice little run recently. Uh, you know, I think that one of these teams will probably make it a little bit closer than it is right now. But probably the Yankees, uh, you just the way they're built right now, this pitching staff has been absolutely unreal. They have the... AL MVP favorite, most likely, and, and Aaron Judge, although Jose Ramirez of the Guardians is certainly making a strong case as well. Uh, so I, I wouldn't, pro I mean, you could take the Yankees at minus 1,000. It's just not going to bring you back very much. Uh, the same could be said for the Astros over in the AL West. You know, I, I did, I was a bit of a believer in the Mariners coming into the year. I felt like they were going to really challenge for them. And the Angels looked like a, you know, a good team early on, but then really it hit a wall. And it's just been the Astros all day, the, the Astros who have made the, uh, you know, World Series or ALCS in like five straight years. They've just been, you know, a, a, really a Warriors-esque dynasty over in the American League for the last half decade. And, you know, I don't think there's any reason why to doubt them right now. Hey, don't disrespect the Mariners. As a Seahawks fan, I have to have blind loyalty to all Seattle sports. Um, I think they'll turn it around. Um, I think George Kirby's an okay pitch. I think he's their pitcher. Um, I be barely even fo I, I follow along. I'm East Coast bias 100% when it comes to baseball. I I don't really stay up for those 10 p.m. first pitches. Um, so as of right now, I'm going to put you on the spot. World Series, who's playing in the World Series when it comes to that time? Uh, well, my preseason pick was Dodgers over Mariners. So uh, Mariners <laughs> You were a big not... Mariners boy. Wow. I know, I know. Even I I'm... wasn't that big, and I'm blind. Well, they they really came on strong in the second half last year. They barely missed the playoffs. They go out and trade for Robbie Ray, Jesse Winker, Eugenio Suarez. I really like the moves they made this offseason, so I felt like you know they were finishing pieces. They were going to surprise everybody. I like to make you know a little bit surprise pick, <laughs> not you know take a break from the monotony. But of course, I picked the Dodgers to win it all, who were like the big favorites coming in the yeah, year. So how much, how much really was <laughs> I doing it? Uh, but I, I think I'll stick with the Dodgers for right now. You know, they they aren't playing super well lately. Uh, their pitching staff has been really banged up this year. Uh, but I think that they just that offense, man, when they are clicking, and obviously they just lost Mookie Betts for an extended amount of time with a rib injury, so that's certainly going to hurt. But when they are at their best, I mean, having Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman and Max Muncy and Justin Turner and Trey Turner and, Cor and of course, Seager's gone. But, I mean, just all the names that are in that lineup, when they are in a playoff series, I I'm going to have a very hard time betting against them. I think that they are just too talented top to bottom. And, you know, it's it's crazy that they've been so good for so long and only won one Mickey Mouse World Series. So, you know, the fact <laughs> – I think they really need to win an actual World Series, if you ask me, to kind of cement – their legacy is one of the best teams uh, in baseball since 2000. Yeah. And their rotation is dirty. Like every part of the Dodgers are just dirt, just nasty. Just so do you call it, is the Lakers championship a Mickey mouse cha championship even more so than to you? <sighs> I would say the Dodgers is probably the most <laughs> Mickey mouse if I have to, to classify it, just because they only had to play 60 games to make the playoffs and it was an expand expanded playoffs so they had to win more playoff games to get there which i get and it, and you know th that 60 game <laughs> sprint a lot of players have talked about how that felt longer than an actual full 162 game season because of all the covid restrictions and like getting tested like six times a day and you know not being able to see your families and all that kind of stuff like i get it that was that was probably very exhausting for players but only having to win 60 games to make the playoffs to me that just kind of devalues it where the lakers like you know, they had to play, I think it was 70% of the season, you know, they had the bubble, you know, to get in and everything. And um, I don't know, I, it, it is different when you're playing in a bubble, as opposed to like with fans and the atmosphere, I mean, in basketball, especially probably more than any other sport, because it's a closed arena. And it just, yeah. the sound is insane that you have to deal with. Um, but I, I would say both are probably still kind of in that um, you know, realm. Whereas like the Tampa Bay Lightning, they won kind of a Mickey Mouse championship and then they won two more. So they, <laughs> you know, the, yeah. or, or, or are they going for the third this year? I, they're going for the third this year, right? I don't know. I'm, they're dominant. I can tell you dominant. that. I, yeah. I, feel, I think they're going for, yeah, they're going for three. They're going for three. It doesn't so matter. They went back, they're not they going to win know? it, but the Avalanche are going <laughs> to win avalanche, it. But... <laughs> go Avalanche. Go Avs, man. Come on. You can't not root for the Avs. They were uh, my team. Did you ever play the, uh, like, NHL not not NHL blitz but like 
It was like a three on three, super fast paced NHL game on the GameCube. For oh, some reason, probably. I picked the Avs when I was what six playing it, and it was like Joe Sackick and uh, like Drew Chris Drury or something like that. There you and go. I was just like, this is my team now. Um, <laughs> have not followed along with the NHL since that. You mean time. the Kraken aren't your team? Oh no, they are. I have a. I now have a Kraken crew neck. Um, it is. They got good colors. They have a fantastic logo. They have everything except their on ice product is absolutely yep. abysmal, much like the Mariners and the Nationals. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, Matt, today as we end out on pooping on the Kraken. Um, where can people find you? Uh, where's your work held? All of that good stuff. Any plug you have, feel free to plug it away. Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter uh, at by Matt Weirich, where it's mostly national stuff, but the occasional you know, MLB and, and random things about my life. So feel free to, <laughs> to give me a follow over there if you care about any of that. And my work's over at NBCSportsWashington.com, where I cover the Nationals and other D.C. sports uh, for NBC Sports Washington. So definitely go ahead on over there and, and give a few of my articles some clicks. I'll, I'll definitely appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll be... Uh... I'll be watching the Dodgers win the World Series and I'll see the Mariners have a second half resurgence and make the World Series as well. They'll make me look smart. Yeah, exactly. Have a great day. You too.